Hello guys, this is Alex from Masters of Ultrason and today we're going to review the Finoco. As you can see, this is light wired probe to this tablet that they provide as well. I want to thank Vino Spain for letting me test their device, publish my experience alongside my humble, honest and impartial opinion which is not sponsored by anyone. Starting from the outset, as I mentioned, it is lighter than other handheld devices, mainly because it doesn't have an integrated battery, but instead it powers through the tablet's battery. This allows extended scanner autonomy, less heating and, all in all, longer scanning sessions. Additionally, it can still be used while it's charging through this port, allowing for a whole shift continuous scan time. As you can see here, the footprint is the same as conventional face array probes. However, it is quite big, not heavy though, and it can be quite difficult to obtain an Apple 4 chambers view sometimes because of lack of space between the chest of the patient and the bed. A detail worth noting here is that they also sell separately an accessory for the linear probe head consisting of a needle guide in case you use it in a more interventional way. It has three configurable physical buttons. In my case, I set them to increase or decrease depth and to record a 5 second clip. The tablet is a Microsoft Surface with their software integrated. At the moment, they don't allow to use the Pro with any other tablet nor iPad Pro because of connectivity and image quality issues. Now, let's see the software and its capabilities. The boot up time is usually less than 30 seconds. This is the main page of their app, and we can see it has quite a lot of features. On the left, we can choose the imaging mode between B mode, color Doppler, full swing Doppler, and M mode. On the bottom bar, we can find some advanced imaging settings, typical from advanced machines and not from pocket devices. So, good point, Vino. This device is the most similar to card machines I have reviewed so far with regards to imaging settings. The center bar freezes the image and displays some interesting tools, such as this one to measure distance, areas, even calculate ejection fraction, and more. And here you're seeing an M mode image with the measurement of the ejection fraction using the septal and posterior walls of the left ventricle, both systolic and diastolic. We can also put some text tags over the image in case you want to save them for a future presentation, article, congress or whatever. Then, here on the top bar, we can choose from prior patient studies and display a past image we took on the left half of the screen while we watch the live image on the right half, in case we want to compare them to assess any improvement or worsening. This makes more sense in case of musculoskeletal that are static images rather than cardiology which are live videos. The image saved can be shared through a variety of options as well. Here, I would like to mention that, contrary to other devices I already reviewed on this channel, such as the Viscan Air, Butterfly, Clarius, given it cannot be plugged to your smartphone, you won't have the WhatsApp or Messages or Telegram or other messaging app sharing option that you use conventionally and would be the most useful channel in case you want to quickly share an image with your core resident or one of your peers. Regarding the price, it's a one-time payment of 4,900 euros plus VAT for the whole package, which includes one Pro that you can choose between linear, curved or phased array, plus one tablet with the software installed. Everything's included, not like Clarius, for example, that pulls with Doppler was an additional $1,000. And contrary to the Butterfly IQ, there aren't any annual subscriptions. I think it's a very good price for what it offers. It costs less than other handheld devices and offers a wide range of advanced settings and imaging modes. Now, let's move to image quality. You're gonna see some recorded clips with the device for you to assess them and obtain your own conclusions. So let's start with this Apical 4 chamber. All these Apical 4 chamber are from the same patient and as you can see, it has great image quality. And here we can see the Apical 4 chamber with color Doppler. I think the color Doppler of this device is really good for a handheld device. Not many devices have this level of precision and color scale. And here we're seeing an Apical 2 chamber. And now we're seeing the Apical 3 chamber. Here it is a subcoastal view. And you can see that the definition is still quite high. And this is a normal parasternal long axis with sharp endocardium borders. 
and here you can see the color Doppler spark in the aorta and this is a patient with heart failure in a personal long axis view and this is the pulse wave Doppler with peak velocities on the bottom right and now let's hear the sound it has a lot of Doppler measurements and settings for example this auto tracing tool that detects the cardiac cycle and the peak velocities and now that we've seen the mitral valve let's see the aorta and finally these are some views from the observer's point of view in front of the tablet this is a parasternal long axis again with sharp endocardium borders and this is a high parasternal short axis seeing the aortic valve this is a low parasternal short axis seeing the papillary muscles on the bottom of the left ventricle and this uh, allows us to see the mitral valve. And as usual, to sum up, let's put the pros and cons all together. On the pros column we have Number 1. Several advanced settings. In my humble opinion, it's something unique that differentiates this device over other handheld ones. In this case, cardiology specialists will be able to adjust the 10 gain compensation, the PRF, the wall filter and pulse rate doppler, and many other. Number two, great image quality. Number three, face the rate footprint and lightweight pro, avoiding hand numbness on prolonged scan times. Number four, almost endless scan sessions, being able to use it while charging as well. On the other hand, the cons column has the following. Number one, difficult to hold with hands. Except for very quick and simple assessments, it requires a stand, which Vino sells as well, or someone else holding the tablet, therefore losing its handful attribute. It is barely impossible for a single person to appropriately scan with the right hand and manage the tablet with the left thumb while holding it with the remaining fingers. Number two, the price, which is $4,900. It includes the tablet with all the software features available, no stand included. However, it's a relative con, because it's expensive alone, but compared to some others out there in the market, it's a quite good price. And number three, limited sharing options, not including most used messaging apps nowadays, such as Messages, WhatsApp, Telegram, and so on. All in all, a very good device, that falls right outside of the handful category that I've been used to review in the channel, but can be a very good option for those specialized in cardiology, in this case, that want some advanced settings and want something between a handful device and a card machine. So that's it, I hope you guys enjoyed it, thank you very much for all the unwavering support you keep giving to the videos and fuel in the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this device, what are your opinions, your thoughts and your suggestions for future videos, in case you want me to review other devices. And finally, you'll find down below in the description box their website and their contact details in case you're interested in the product and you want to request a further live demo for example, which is something I really recommend in case you want to buy this device. So, on to the next one, bye!